Thank you for watching this video from Kingsway Soft. Today, I will be introducing the SSIS Integration Toolkit for QuickBooks. The QuickBooks Toolkit is a high-performance data integration solution that works for QuickBooks utilizing Microsoft SQL Server Integration Services (SSIS) capabilities. This adapter will handle all the intricate details when working with the QuickBooks web service interfaces. In today's demo, we will demonstrate our software running in a SQL Server 2012 environment. If you're using a different SQL Server version, the interface might be slightly different. To get started, let's create a simple SSIS project. This tutorial will already assume that you have the SSIS bits installed, otherwise you will not see the SSIS project type here. In the Business Intelligence template, Select the Integration Services project and give your project a name. Press OK to create the solution. SSIS is a platform that can be used to implement data migration and integration solutions using its drag and drop capabilities. To begin the SSIS implementation using our toolkit, we will configure the Connection Manager to manage the connections with QuickBooks Web Services. Before configuring the Connection Manager, it is important to note that our software uses the registry to store tokens generated when connecting to QuickBooks app through the QuickBooks Connection Manager or Token Manager. In order to write these tokens to the local machine registry hive, you would need to give the proper permissions to the registry entry. I will explain this later in more detail. Let's go to the default location, which is in HKEY Local Machine Software, and select the SSIS Integration Toolkit for QuickBooks folder. I will give permissions to the necessary user. If you are going to deploy this package to a different server, remember to assign the new server proper permissions to write to registry. All the privilege setup is only necessary when you choose to store the tokens in the local machine. There is also the option to store the tokens to the current user, in which case the privilege setup is not necessary. We will create a new connection in the Connection Manager area. In the Add SSIS Connection Manager dialog box, select the Connection Manager for QuickBooks and press the Add button. In the general page, the base URL of a production instance to the QuickBooks Online API endpoint is specified by default. Since I will be using a sandbox instance, I will check the Using Sandbox option, which will allow the base URL to point to the sandbox API endpoint. The Connection Manager uses tokens generated by the QuickBooks app once you give the authorization, which will be seen in the next step. Since these tokens are stored in registry, you have the option to choose if you would like to store them in the default local machine location or move them to the more secure current user location. Next, you would enter your company ID. You can find this value by going to your account page when you log into QuickBooks Online. It should be an integer number. You would then select the Edit Company information and use the web browser to sign in and complete the authentication process. By completing the OAuth authentication, this will authorize our app to generate QuickBooks tokens. It is important to note that you would generally log in to QuickBooks once using the Edit Company Information button. By logging in twice, a new token will be generated by the QuickBooks app, in which case it would invalidate the previous token. Once the token has been generated, the token is good to go for six months. Once the token expires, our software will automatically request a new token from QuickBooks, which will then replace the existing token in Windows Registry and will be used for future connections or service calls. There is also a timeout settings where you can specify a service call timeout value. The default value is 120 seconds. In the Advanced Settings page, there is an option for a retry on intermittent errors. If this option is checked, it will attempt to recover from potential intermittent outages or disruption of service so that the integration does not have to be stopped due to temporary networking issues. 
We have designed this option so that it should only retry when it is deemed to be safe to do so. You may also enter your proxy server information if you are behind a proxy server. After filling in all the required information properly, there is the option to test connection. You may click this button to see if a connection to your QuickBooks account can be successfully established. Using the QuickBooks Connection Manager to perform application authorization is only one of the ways to manage QuickBooks tokens. Our software is also shipped with a QuickBooks Token Manager utility, which allows you to add, change, or remove tokens. In addition to this, you can use the utility program to export and import tokens so that you can transfer tokens from one server to another. As you can see from the utility program user interface, the token location is displayed. It also displays the expiration date time value of each token. If the token has already expired, the next time our component connects to QuickBooks, the QuickBooks Connection Manager will automatically request a new token. It will then replace the existing token with the new token. Note that our software manages the tokens after the initial authorization is done, as previously mentioned. So, for example, in your production environment, you should only need to run the Token Manager program once to set up the initial tokens. When setting up your tokens, you can import the tokens from the server used to develop your packages on. Our next step is to use the data flow components offered by the SSIS Integration Toolkit for QuickBooks. Make sure you are in the data flow view. If you are using SSIS 2012 or later, you will automatically see these data flow components in your toolbox. If you do not see any components, click on the SSIS Toolbox button here. If you are using SSIS 2008 R2 or earlier, you would need to manually add our components. I will pull up the SQL Server Business Intelligence Development Studio to display this. Now, right-click on the toolbox and select Choose Items. You will then select the SSIS Data Flow Items tab and choose our components. Let's go back to the SSIS 2012 environment. In the SSIS toolbox, you will see the QuickBooks source and QuickBooks destination components. The QuickBooks source component can be used to read data from the QuickBooks server, while the QuickBooks destination component can be used to write data to QuickBooks. In our data flow view, we will drag a QuickBooks source component from the SSIS toolbox to the design surface. Double-click to open the Configuration Editor. Specify the Connection Manager. I will use the one we just created. Now we can select a batch size, which is the amount of records we would like to retrieve for each service call to QuickBooks Online. The batch size by default is set to 100. Our source component supports reading data from QuickBooks using either Entity or Query Mode. When we select Entity as a source type, you can use the Source Entity dropdown to select which entity you would like to read from. The Query option is a more advanced option, which gives you more control over what you read from QuickBooks. For now, let's select Entity. We support all different QuickBooks entity types, including the name list entities, transaction entities, and other supporting entities. When a nameless entity such as account is chosen, there will be an include inactive records option available. If this option is selected, it will read all the records including all the inactive records from QuickBooks. Let's select a transaction entity, invoice. For the transaction entities, we can pick what line detail types will be extracted, which will create more than one output depending on what types are chosen. We will select Sales Item Line Detail. By selecting this type, our source component will have two outputs, which include the primary output and the Sales Item Line Detail output. If we navigate over to the Columns page, there is a Configure the Output Columns for dropdown. We will see both outputs listed. By default, the primary output is currently selected. 
You may select or unselect fields according to your needs. It is always best practice to select only those fields that you need to use in the downstream pipeline components. If you switch to the sales item line detail output, you can view and configure which fields will be used for extraction for that particular output. If we now go back to the general page and select query as a source type, a pre-built query will be displayed for the primary output of the selected entity invoice. As we mentioned, the query mode offers a more advanced option to read data from QuickBooks. I will use a where clause to filter the data. Notice that when you use the query option, you can insert SSIS variables to parameterize the query. The previously selected line details type will also remain selected. Notice the refresh component button. This is especially useful for cases where we have created new fields in a particular entity in QuickBooks, and we would like these changes to be reflected inside the component. Clicking this button will update the component to the latest QuickBooks metadata. Let's click the OK button to finish the configuration of the source component. We will write both outputs to two separate text files. We would now have to configure the flat file destination component to write data into and execute this task. The next thing we will talk about is the QuickBooks destination component. To demonstrate this, we will now create a new data flow task. We will retrieve data from the two text files that we got while we were just demonstrating our QuickBooks source component. Once the flat file source configuration is done, we will connect these components to the QuickBooks destination component. It is useful to note that when this destination component receives more than one input, all inputs have to be sorted using the same key column. This can be done using the sort transformation component. We will pull out two sort components to sort the output data from the flat file source components. Let's now drag a destination component to the design surface we will connect to the upstream pipeline component. Note that here we need to choose whether the input should be used as the primary input or a secondary input of the destination component. It might be worth mentioning that if you are going to write to a nameless entity or you just want to write to a transaction entity without involving a line item detail type, you would just need one input, which is the primary input. In the case that you want to write to a transaction entity and also one or more of its associated line item detail types, you will need to have more than one input and you would specify which output each input should be mapped for the destination component. Let's connect the other sorted output to the destination component, which will become the secondary input of the destination component. After the destination component has been connected, we can double click to open its editor window to configure the component. We will first specify the connection manager. As you can see, there are four action types. Some obvious actions are the create and update. The hard delete action will permanently delete the record and is mostly used for the nameless entity. The soft delete option is normally used for the transaction entity and makes the records inactive. For this demo, we will use the update action with the invoice destination entity. The batch size by default is set to 1 and has a maximum allowed value of 25. Now, we will need to configure the line item settings. We will select the primary entity key column, 
which should be the key field for the primary output that will be used to join with the line item detail type. For the secondary input that we have for this destination component, we are going to use it as the sales item line detail type. Let's pick the invoice.id column to be used for the join. Let's head to the columns page, which is where we configure the mapping from the upstream pipeline components. You would first see the mapping of the primary input. As you can see, automatic mapping has already been done based on a name match. You can also choose to map or unmap a field depending on your business requirement. Once we have done the mapping for the primary input, we can switch the input to a line item detail type. In this case, it is the sales item line detail type. Note that an automatic mapping has been done as well, and you can map or unmap in a similar fashion. There is also a refresh component button, which will update the component to the latest QuickBooks metadata with one click. We can now navigate to the error handling page where there are three error handling mechanisms to choose from. The default option is fail on error, where the entire data flow will fail as soon as an error occurs. There is also the redirect rows to error output, where the error output will contain the failed records with extra columns, error code, error column, and error message. The ignore error option is generally not recommended. We have now completed the configuration for our data flow task. This concludes the demonstration of our SSIS integration toolkit for QuickBooks. Thank you for watching this video. For any additional questions, please feel free to contact us.